Like, there's no end point to healing. It's just consistent effort to identify the areas of deterioration and then working on them. And that's just an ebb and flow and you're just gonna keep doing that until you're not here anymore. <laughs> Depression's not something you can easily get rid of, but um, it's just knowing how to live with it. And ultimately, like, when you get to this point, there's no set way or right way of doing it all. You know, there's, there's just your way. After my accident, you know, I had thousands of messages on my Facebook page. So like my little community of supporters, it's dwindled down now that I've stopped cycling, but there's still some of those core people that are just, just there to support me as a person rather than me as the cyclist. My friendship circle uh, has changed a lot. I definitely was able to get a lot of support from The Mighty, and that is an online community that offers support for people struggling with anything from mental distress to mental illness to physical disabilities to intellectual disabilities to any form of hardship. There was definitely a lot of encouragement for me to get better. That was one thing that I'm incredibly grateful for, like not only just from my family, from the psychiatrist, from the psychologist, from nurses, despite how grueling it was to go through, there was always love around me. Try as much as you can to just trust that they are still in there because they are. You're not yourself when you have PTSD and you can't control it because it's a part of you that, you know, it's just the back of your mind that's doing something that you don't want to do and you feel out of control, you know, you feel scared. In my experience, the more I spoke about it to people, the more I realized that a lot of people I, that I was friends with for years we're like, yeah, I have anxiety. And I was like, what? Straight away, I was like, well, I'm, I'm not alone. There's something really special about being in a room with other people that just get you and they don't judge you and they don't think, oh, cause you're crying, it's a problem. For me, I think opening up and being honest about my mental health and what I've been through is, is part of leadership. My encouragement to you guys is, is to, yeah, to, to stay. As they approach the summit of Mount Warning, three weeks after his 18th birthday and taking out the win of his very short career so far, Keegan Girdleston crosses the line. I felt kind of lost for a long time um, after my accident because that passion decided, started to dissipate after I realised I was probably not going to be ever as good physically as I, I was. just found myself in this, this place where I was just like, I don't know, I just feel empty. My whole life was diverted in the direction of cycling and it was sports orientated and I was super driven and I still am. But I think that only works one side of the brain. And then when I started turning my attention towards acting, the more creative side of my brain, that really made a difference. You know, I started writing, you know, like scripts and books and like stories. I've always wanted to tell a message, you know, I've always wanted to inspire people, um, change their way of thinking. And so I guess in a way I can do that with acting and maybe that's why I love it so much. For a period of time there, I never felt that warmth. I never felt goodness, I never felt loved, you know, so um, I'm feeling a lot better. And the fact that I'm sitting here with you talking to you is an achievement in itself. So I, I'm still a soldier, I'm still a firefighter, I'm still volunteering with St John's and with the Coast Guard, as um, I do have um, a passion to help people. I thought forever I was going to be like that, forever, and I hated, I mean, can you imagine reliving an event that like scares the out of you every day, all day? I mean, that is horrific to be put through that. And I don't have that anymore. And I know there's more work to do, but I'm content. It does get better, it can get better. That every time, you know, you overcome anything, that's always a victory. No matter how small it is, it's just, the little ones lead to, you know, the big ones. We are all just trying to do what we can with what we have at the time. And 
that could look like anything. That could look like just being in bed and breathing. And if you can do that, <laughs> good on you, because you're still here. The world needs you here. I am currently studying towards a certificate in health and well-being, which will grant me a qualification as a support worker, which I've been fizzing about my whole year. I always tell my family that I wouldn't be here without them, and they're like, well, that's silly. <laughs> like, it's you who's done all the work. What would the point be of doing the work if I had nothing to love and nothing to hope for and nothing to want to grow towards? Systems treat systems do not heal healing takes place between people within families within communities no level of intervention from a system is going to do or substitute what can be done by a parent a friend a mentor or our community. The love, the comfort, the protection that human relationships help us, we cannot underestimate their power to heal. There are people who practically do not have another single human being they can relate to and connect with in their lives. And that is when spirituality and a sense of something greater than I, finding meaning and purpose can make a huge difference in a person's life. And that is the core of post-traumatic growth. What's changed? I guess I've just found more joy. I still can't uh, surf in waves that I used to enjoy, which are a bit bigger and things like that, but um, that doesn't matter so much to me. What matters to me is that I've gotten a good portion of my daily life back. I think at the like at the heart of it people do things unintentionally. So I try not to take that into consideration too much, but I do remember once my boss saying to me, "It's been 2 months. When are you going to actually get over this?" You know? I mean, my goodness, how can you have like some sort of time limitation that you're allotting to someone for their grief over something really traumatic that's happened to them? It changed my whole life. It changed... <laughs> but to have people make remarks like that, even my family, like it's somehow inconvenient for them. <laughs> so now working in the uh, predator free space, um, uh, that in itself is a huge change from working in the military. I need to pull on all those other things that we get taught in the military, flexibility, be open minded. Um, the ability to to relate to to people and um, for someone that has a mental health issue that can be uh, very trying. I needed that professional help because my life uh, two years ago it, it was going downhill fast. I've been down that slope too many times. I don't know if I can keep crawling my way out of it. A lot of that also has to do with me engaging correctly and ensuring that I'm I'm using those tools in uh, my every day to day life, which which I know I'm not. Transitioning out of the uh, NZDF into civilian life can be challenging, uh, especially if you've been in the military for such a long period of time, where you're used to that, that way of life. It can be challenging. And uh, right now, there's not enough support for that to happen. I would say I'm probably at like the best mental health I've been at for a very long time. Every day I'm doing something that, that makes me happy or that fulfills me in some way. I just did a commercial and then I've got this music video now on Sunday. They told me it's about a soldier that went overseas and did things that he doesn't feel like he deserves to be forgiven for. They like the idea that I've already got personal experience with PTSD. At the beginning of COVID, I was actually doing pretty well. I had the best year of my life. 
first year out of high school, um, I was studying at ARTA, doing the Certificate of Health and Wellbeing, and now I'm doing the Bachelor of Social Work. Uh, first six weeks of semester, I did not step foot on campus. <laughs> we had the Omicron outbreak, and half of my classes were online, and the other class other half I had no energy to make it here. I was definitely pretty depressed. The thing with PTSD is it thrives off uncertainty. It's sort of like the 40,000 aftershocks that have happened since um, 2010. Even though the ground wasn't shaking, my head was shaking. Yeah, I think to seek peace is too much of an expectation. And I hope that by my sharing what it's been like for me and where I've gotten to, that it might give someone else hope to just hang in there, to just keep, keep going, you know? And I really wish for them that they're able to find some peace because they deserve that. Everyone deserves that. You're the only person that's asked me that. Even my psychologist hasn't asked me that question. What do I want? Peace. I think from peace sort of be, give me a bit more clarity. Hopefully things in life will start to align. Um, yeah, peace. <laughs>